Example number one, some of you may have seen, it is, it is a, a uh, video at YouTube that I recommend to you that's about a million four hundred and fifty thousand people have looked at so far, called FedEx versus Federal Bureaucracy. It's a very simple model. How many of you have ever gone online and looked at a package from either UPS or FedEx? Just raise your hand if you've ever done it. Okay. Over half the room, right? I, I want to slow you down for a second. This is a fact and not a theory. Now, the reason I'm saying this is you'll occasionally see in the news media, well, Gingrich has interesting ideas, but after all, we have to be realistic. Realistic, by the way, is a Washington Sacramento term for, you, for they're not going to do what you want. <laughs> so I want you to think about this model. If you have a market-oriented entrepreneurial system that focuses on the customer, that rewards achievement, punishes failure, invests in information technology, follows the writing of Drucker, Duran, Deming, Womack, understands Toyota production system, lean manufacturing, Six Sigma. It can track 23 million packages a day while they're moving and do it so efficiently that you can track your personal package without any extra charge. Now, that's the world that works. UPS says that a UPS delivery truck has more computing power than the Apollo 13 lander. And they also say that when a UPS delivery person walks into a doctor's office, they double the amount of computing power by what they're carrying on their belt. That's the world that works. Now, over here is the world that fails. Let's take, for example, the Department of Homeland Security, which cannot find between 10 and 20 million people uh, when they are here illegally and they are sitting still. <laughs> Now, I have a very simple policy proposal, which you could call your congressman about. Appropriate about $200 million and send a package to every person who's here illegally. <laughs> when it's delivered, you'll know exactly where they are. You pull up the package. Now, it's hyperbole, but there's something real about this. Let me give you a second example. The U.S. Census Bureau announced six weeks ago that they had planned to spend a billion three hundred million dollars designing a handheld computer and failed. Now remember, every UPS and FedEx delivery person has a wireless handheld computer. I mean, this is this is like the, 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 the Census Bureau could have gone outside, flagged down two trucks, and said, could we, like, borrow your computer for an hour? We're... <laughs> they announced, but here, here's the arrogance of bureaucracy. This is why our friends who defend the world that is failing have a hopeless case. They couldn't, I would debate any of them anywhere in the country. They can't defend this in a million years. The answer of the failing bureaucracy is to hire 600,000 people as temporary workers to do what they call a paper and pencil census for $15 billion. Now, the last census, which was too expensive and fairly incompetent, cost $6.6 billion. So they're going to more than double the cost hiring 600,000 temporary workers using paper and pencil in 2010 in the country which invented the Internet. Now, if you think about this, this is stupidity on such a grand scale that if you wrote it as a comedy, people would say you were being unfair to the government. So I've come up with several proposals, and I'm only going to give you, this will be my newsletter next week. I do a, a newsletter every Tuesday that comes out electronically, and if you want to, you can get it. Just go to my first name, newt.org. Um, but I, 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 uh, I'm doing a newsletter next week on the, on the census. And here's my boldest census proposal. Instead of allocating $15 billion, the Congress should allocate a $100 million tax-free first prize and $1,000, $100,000 tax-free second prizes for a census lottery. And in order to be eligible for the lottery, you have to either fill out your own census form, in which case you get a ticket, and if you help somebody else fill out a census form, you get a second ticket. So the more people you help fill out their census forms, the more tickets you get. Now, in the poorest neighborhoods in America, 
you will have people who love lotteries, who are going door to door, knocking on every door, saying, have you already filled out your census or can I do it? (laughs) And for about, I'm guessing with total administrative costs, by the way, you would then match up all the forms which would be submitted electronically and you would do something clever like use Google Earth and you would match them up against every existing house in the country. And then you could figure out if there are any houses missing, in which case you would you would hire uh, an existing organization which routinely covers every street in America, such as, say, UPS and FedEx, who are there six days a week, to say, would you go buy house number 205 in this zone, uh, which they drive by anyway. And you'd pay them a little bit more than you'd pay a temporary worker, but they'd be doing a lot fewer stuffs. And you'd have a fairly high sense of reliability. And they actually know how to use handheld computers. I mean, there's just a number of pieces. Now, notice... What I just described, my hunch is it would actually work. I mean, this is a country where, where people get up every morning to talk about American Idol. Do you know how many people would be babbling about the census lottery? And how many people would be going, when are they going to do the drawing? Have, you know, have, has everybody in the room gotten their census in yet? I can help you, you know. But what I'm trying to show you is a rhythm of fundamental replacement of a dying old order. I'll give you two, two last examples of this direction. I'm, I'm very worried about education. President Reagan issued a report in 1983 called A Nation at Risk, which said, and I participated in, in hearings around the country, the Secretary Terrell Bell, who was the Secretary of Education. And it said, if a foreign power did to our children what we are doing to them, we would consider it an act of war. That's how bad it was. The truth is, for the last quarter century, we have been defeated by the forces of ignorance. And it's forces of selfish ignorance. It's schools of education whose theories have failed, but their entire tenure is based upon being wrong. It is bureaucracies of education who have failed, but their lives are dependent on keeping the jobs, even if they're useless and destructive. It is teachers' unions who defend the incompetent, because as long as they pay dues, they're they're actually succeeding, because their metric isn't educating the child. Their metric is whether or not the union dues got paid. And for a quarter century, we've refused to draw a line in the sand and say, that's enough. This is going to be a straightforward, all-out fight about the nature of this country. And the example I use in my book, Real Change, is Detroit which we, every conservative in America, should talk about Detroit every day, and we should be asking Senator Obama and the Democrats in Congress what their answer is to Detroit. Detroit in 1950 had the highest per capita income in the United States and 1,800,000 people. Detroit today has less than 900,000 people, which means that over half the housing stock is not used, which means the remaining housing stock has collapsed in value. And it's 62nd in per capita income. Its school system is so bad that it only graduates 26% of entering freshmen on time. It cheats three out of every four children at a time when if you're an African-American male and you drop out of high school, you face a 73% unemployment rate in your 20s and a 60% chance of going to jail. And nobody stands up and says this is a total moral outrage. What you have is bad culture reinforced by bad government doing bad things to human beings, and the right doesn't want to talk about it, and the left sure doesn't want to talk about it, and so we just tolerate it, and it gets worse every year.